All right, Bulls and Bears, we are back with another dose of economic reality, financial news slash economic news. It is Sunday. It is August 18th, 2024, and it's going to be a bit of a longer report today as I did not put out a video yesterday. Um, had some things going on with the family, but uh, we're going to get caught up on everything today. Please make sure you subscribe. Very important time to stay ahead of the financial economic news, stay ahead of the curve, so to speak. Now, I think the biggest, most important thing that I'm going to be discussing in this video is that I received another update from my, I guess you could say, confidential source. And don't believe everything you see or hear or read, but listen to the information that I have to put out and decide for yourself if you think that it makes sense, if you think that it's a possibility and they make proper preparations, uh, prepare accordingly. When I say prepare, I'm talking about all types of preparation. Mostly what we cover here on this channel is financial preparation, but there's also other forms of preparations you may want to consider, especially when you consider the magnitude of what, may, what might be coming up here uh, within the next just couple months. We're talking about October, right? So stay tuned for that in just a few moments here. But first, some other financial economic news uh, to get caught up on here. I'll start right here out of um, Bloomberg. Whoops, wrong one here. Out of Bloomberg, Goldman cuts U.S. recession risk following retail sales and jobs data. Remember the report that we did just, uh, was it Friday? Where the jobs numbers weren't good, folks. And the retail sales numbers were only propped up by more credit card debt accumulation. And then we had government spending um, making up the GDP well, just a couple weeks before that. We talked about that. So, for folks, this is all a facade. And it's all a bunch of fakery. The economy is not good. Most U.S. consumers right now, a little more than 70%, are really, really struggling. Now, you can argue the top 30% are still doing okay, especially the top 10%, but even 20% of the top 30%, uh, a lot of them are only doing okay because of debt uh, and the ability to refinance and uh, to do balance transfer games, things like that. But it's mostly the bottom 70% when you really look at uh, the people that are really struggling to get by, and most of those people in that 70% uh, group going further into debt each time we look at the debt numbers, right? So we know that it's a ticking time bomb, the end of the road is approaching, and uh, some fireworks, I think, are about ready to pop off, if you ask me. Uh, but let's get into some other information that I think is going to underpin uh, what we've been talking about here as far as the timelines and what's really, really happening with the economy. Let's move on to real estate. We know real estate, the backbone of the economy, the biggest asset class in the world when you look at U.S. real estate. Florida saw a huge run up in home prices over the past few years with the, with the health crisis. People flocking to Florida and states like Texas and Florida, both uh, from more expensive, more crowded areas. Florida hit by the worst real estate crisis in decades as desperate condo owners slash prices by up to 40 percent. So will we see Florida spread to the rest of the country with the crisis, the cost of living nightmare? Uh, there's a reason these people are slashing prices so drastically, folks, because the cost of living nightmare is finally caught up to. And there's only so long you can transfer balances and uh, rob Peter to pay Paul and take on more and more debt with these current interest rates. There's only so long that you can withstand that, right? Without some sort of massive freeze on credit card payments and other forms of debt, loans, etc., like they did in 2020, People have to do something, and these homeowners are actually doing something. They're, they're selling. They're dumping their homes. Florida condo owners are slashing prices by up to 40% as they strive to dodge massive incoming repair costs. That's just part of it. We're going to get into the rest of it here. Uh, some units have had almost half a million dollars wipe off their asking prices uh, as fears trigger a wave, a wave of sell-offs. Um, one Three-bedroom, two-bedroom condo in St. Petersburg was listed around $1.2 million at the start of the year. But without a buyer, the owner slashed now at first down to $898,000. Now, as of last week, down to $715,000. You notice they talked about repair costs. What's happening is, is it's the overall cost of living. It's repair costs. Yes, but that's just part of the puzzle, folks. Look at the condos. There's a reason why it's starting with condos or attached homes, what you may call townhomes. It's because of the cost to carry these units. We have homeowners association raising their fees. They're blaming inflation, just like the companies, just like the stores. Everybody's blaming inflation, right? But do you think they're not getting paid more? 
just like we saw the profits soar at a lot of these companies that blamed inflation for the price increases, the HOAs are doing the same thing. Their HOAs are run just like a business, right? There's people that work for the HOAs. They want to make more money. They're finding more ways to nickel and dime their tenants. And it's not just nickeling and diming. It's 50s and 100s dollar bills there uh, with all the new regulations and costs and just the higher prices. But then you have the cost of repairs, as they mentioned. You have the cost of the home insurance, right? And even the common areas have to have an insurance policy in case something happens outside of the units. Because remember, when you own a unit, the common areas are basically community responsibility. So your homeowners association, they're going to raise the, the rate because of the insurance for the common area. So you have your townhome, your condo with the insurance on that. And you have the condo condominium insurance uh, that's billed to you as the homeowner through the HOA. And that's going up, right? You have, of course, of all the se severe weather, all the damage that's been sustained in Florida and many other states, driving up materials costs. Remember we talked about the lumber cost, uh, was it maybe last week? where we haven't seen lumber dip back down to where it was just in 2020, it actually stayed elevated. And we said that was gonna happen right here. We said the severe weather, the destruction, uh, it's gonna keep supply limited in housing. And that was just one of the things that we talked about why the housing bubble wasn't gonna go bust. But again, it gets to a point where you're gonna start seeing these homeowners get so desperate. And could it be starting with Florida? And it's going to get very interesting. I don't know exactly how it's going to play out because we have a lot of inflationary forces, a lot of deflationary forces when people start hitting their debt limits and when you start getting a lot of desperate sellers. Uh, but please let me know what you think. Is Florida just the tip of the iceberg? Is this going to spread to the rest of the United States? And will we see a housing bus? Or are there too many rescue programs in the cards? Not just in the cards, already here. We just talked about the last report. We talked about a $25,000 a down payment assistance program that's likely to be implemented nationwide if miss harris uh, gets her way that's her plan to quote unquote help homeowners but what it's going to do is drive prices up higher she also talked about more protections for renters and it reminded me of what we saw in 2020 where all the renters a lot of them stopped paying rent because they knew they were protected and that drove up the rents for other people because the landlords they said hey we're losing money from these people let's charge these people more the ones that are still paying and you know what happens happened with rent prices right we all know that uh so folks this is serious inflationary deflationary we don't know which way it's going to go but prepare for a storm here and uh let's step away from real estate for a minute let's go on to the next uh, bit of news here well i guess it just still kind of ties in with real estate look what's happening up in the la area uh long beach rather LA Times, homeless people will face fines and possible arrest in Long Beach crackdown. We've been cracking down, I say we, we're talking about California, uh, cracking down on homeless people. But what are these homeless people going to do? Are they going to pay the fines? Right? They're living in a tent for a reason. They're not going to be able to pay the fines. A lot of them will probably like to go to jail, right? Because it's probably more comfortable in jail than it is on a tent on the sidewalk where Bugs are going to be crawling in there. Um, maybe the bugs will be crawling into the jail cells as well, but probably a lot more comfortable and probably some hot meals that you might get in jail that you might not get out in a tent somewhere. What's going to really hurt a lot of these people, though, is they have a lot of addicts, and the addicts don't want to go to jail. But I think a lot of these people probably want to go to jail. It's probably a better setup than outside in a tent somewhere. But here's the real story behind the story. We already see the jails overcrowded and in california and other areas too but especially california there's reasons why there's so many crimes that don't get severe punishment it's because the jails are already overcrowded and if you start filling them up with tens of thousands of homeless people because because they're homeless you're basically criminalizing being homeless i mean uh, unless you can think of a place where these people can go but, um, you know, they're cracking down on these people in, in the spots they're in with these 10 cities right now. And we'll have to see how this plays out. But it looks to me like a disaster. And you may see crime spike even more as if cells get filled up even more with these homeless people. It's going to be less people that they can arrest and actually put away for any significant amount of time. And who knows, you might see crime um, even spike, not just get worse, but uh, the rapidness and the severity of the, uh, the worsening of the crime. 
could be uh, mind blowing. We're going to see how it plays out here. But this homeless situation, you know, when you really dig into it, it plays into a lot of different things, including crime, uh, the prison population, all that. And of course, they don't have the money to just pay the fines. You can't just fine the homeless problem away or make these people, uh, you know, go somewhere. If they could have went somewhere, I'm sure they probably would. All right, let's move on here, folks. Uh, it gets crazier and crazier. Gold recently rallied to an all-time high. And how much of this is currency creation, but also how much of this is the BRICS nations, the de-dollarization? And we're going to talk about the October, uh, what I think a warning that I was given. We're going to put out there exactly what I was told here. Uh, but first, gold, 2,546. It jumped up just 2% recently. Uh, bring up a one-year chart on it here. And you want to talk about an uptrend. Gold is looking very, very strong. Um, let's go up to a five-year chart here. And then go back into a five-day chart. So, uh, so yeah, 2,546, folks. What did we tell you many years ago? Precious metals, folks. Now, the big one that hasn't really been unleashed yet is silver. And many people are out there saying that silver should be just as much, if not more, than gold. I know that sounds crazy, $2,500 an ounce silver, but there's real things happening right now with the BRICS nations. Also a big suppression of silver because there's so many industrial uses with silver. And also look at the accumulation of precious metals, both precious metals by the central banks. Why do central banks each year, they buy more and more and more precious metals and when you look at the central banks that are doing this, it's the BRICS nation's central banks that are leading the charge, right? So I don't think it's a coincidence. I think there's something behind this surge. And I think there's still massive price suppression happening in both gold and silver. But pretty soon it's going to be unleashed. That's what I've been told. It's going to be unleashed. Uh, the mask is going to get ripped off of uh, the Joker. And we're going to see some reality in these prices. And it's probably going to blow a lot of people's minds. Uh, you're going to wake up one morning and the, the metals prices are going to be way past what anybody I think could have imagined. But when you know the manipulation that's been happening behind the scenes, the naked shorting, the uh, paper manipulation, buying and, sell, buying and selling contracts, which suppresses the real physical price. Uh, most of you probably know this, but it's, it's, folks, it's massive. Believe me. And actually, when I say most of you know this, I think most of you know this in general. But I don't think most of us, probably not even myself, know the magnitude of the manipulation behind the scenes, right? Unless you're working in that particular uh, part of the industry, All right? And also another piece of this, I think, is the rate cut expectations. Is that going to be um, inflationary? You bet it is. And it's going to be de-dollarizing as well. Now, let's move on to my latest message here. I've got my notes over here and I actually got an email. And... Um, I think this is legit, folks. I've been contacted by someone that says October is going to be some serious happenings. Uh, prepare for, and this is what I talked about here, prepare for an outage like you've never seen before. And it's going to be some sort of hack. And I think it's going to be around the same time as we're going to see this uh, night of the shift where all these nations are getting together and they're going to dump the dollar. And initially it could cause a big interest rate spike. If all these countries do what I'm being told they're going to do and dump the dollar at the same time in the night of the shift, you're going to see a massive interest rate spike. Now, some people are out there saying it's going to be a nothing burger because the central bank can just come in with endless amounts of money and just buy up all the debt and buy up everything that's been dumped. But other people are saying it's not that simple, that there's some other things going on behind the scenes. But here's what I want to put out there. It's going to be over 150 countries set to adopt the new BRICS payment system. This is what I'm being told, folks. Over 150 countries. And uh, let me look this up. How many countries are in the U.S. total? Folks, this is just, wow. It's pretty shocking. There's only 195 countries, according to um, a Google search result here, world -a meter world meter 195. I knew it was in the 190 range. But we've got 100 and over 150 set to adopt the new BRICS payment system. And let me just read you some of my other notes here that I've got. Um, folks, if we see a massive dump by this many countries at the same time of all U.S. debt, and then they announce they're all going to a new payment system that's going to be either partially or fully backed 
buy gold, silver, and other precious metals and commodities. Uh, folks, this is going to be a massive shock. So you better get ready, folks. Um, uh, when it goes live, these participants are looking to explore an expansion into the system for transmitting financial messages, right? So it's an alternative to the SWIFT payment system that the U.S. has basically weaponized and used against many other countries. I'm sure you've probably seen the sanctions and things like that that the U.S. has already uh, been involved with here. And here's something else that I was told here. The payment system has become uh, very important for this alliance as a priority in the upcoming 2024 BRICS Summit. And that's happening in October, folks. Um, and I'm told also the system's debut would likely come with immediate activity. At this point, there's a good chance it's going to be ready for the critical BRICS October summit folks so we're uh just about a month and a half away folks october is going to be here will it be the beginning will it be the end or will it not be at all again take what i'm saying do some research does it make sense to you i've been preparing for this for years i think i'll be fine and probably a lot of my viewers will be fine uh you might want to get some precious metals and other types of preparations have some money out of the bank have cash water food essentials uh ready in case we do see this whole thing go down or you wake up one day and there's a massive spike in inflation the dollar is falling off of a cliff because of this announcement and even if it's not mechanical could even just the thought or the fear of the announcement trigger a major sell-off i mean you let me know what you think about all this down in the comments also when we look back in history october is a very big month uh what was it two weeks ago we pulled up different charts of previous market crashes just looking at stock market sell-offs and many of them happen in October. There's something about October where uh, people are getting out before the end of the year. Uh, what is it? Who knows? But uh, I'm not taking any chances. I'm going to continue to prepare. Uh, folks, continue. Keep your eyes wide open. Look around. See what's going on. Get all the latest news that you can get. One way you could do it is subscribing to this channel. I spend hours digging, researching. I'm in my car. If I'm riding on a trolley or something, we have a trolley system here in San Diego. I'm on my phone. I'm looking up news. <laughs> I'm saving news news articles. If my wife's with me, she's like, come on, put your phone down, man. Look around. Enjoy the scenery. And I'm like, oh, man, I got to get some news. I got to get all the latest news. I don't want to miss any important story. I want to bring it to my audience. So thanks to everybody for being here. Uh, again, please make sure to subscribe. Keep this channel alive. Thank you very much. I don't think there um, I think there's powers that be that may not want a lot of the things I talk about uh, to get out there because if you look back, most of the things we've talked about have come true. When most other channels were predicting just the opposite they were predicting a housing bubble going bust and i said how's it going to go bust with all these inflationary forces all these rescue programs down payment assistance programs uh, and everything else folks so if you want to be on top of it folks we'll uh we'll talk soon we'll be back for another report asap and as always keep stacking everybody bye for now peace